So today we have Rajan Kalia with us. Uh, Rajan is the co-founder of Salto Defi uh, and Karma Notes, right? Uh, we are going to talk uh, technology and talent management with Rajan, right? Rajan, welcome. Thank you. Thank right. you, Nishit. So Rajan, maybe a good point to start off with is, is talking about how is technology really disrupting traditional talent management as we know it? Okay, great. So I, as, as, I, uh, as I see it, I think it's going to be completely disruptive. Sure. Uh, if we were to look at talent management in three distinct parts, obviously we can't divide it in many many ways, but sure. the way I like to divide it is in three distinct parts. Sure. The first one, performance management. The second, sure. about competencies. Sure. And the third, about succession and potential performance kind of things which we talk about. Sure. I think everything is up for grabs. And let's talk a little bit about performance management first, because performance right. management, when we look at it from the traditional 80s when, uh, you know, the bell curve came into place and, right. and all the companies started talking about it. And recently, last two years, sure. a lot of debate has been, do we need bell curves, et cetera, et cetera. I think sure. the whole question can be taken off the table. Right. Because bell curves and real-time performance right. technology can capture rather than doing something at the end of the year and sure. saying, hey, we need to fit everybody in the bell and yeah. start shoving, pushing, HR trying to do something to say, okay, right. you want people there. Right. The bell curve will automatically form. It can form if right. we are capturing real-time data on performance. Interesting. Because statistically, human sure. beings in a large set, anything sure. which is more than 30 or 50, right. can be put into a bell curve yeah. because there will be people performing in that way right. for it to automatically form. And sure. we don't need to push or shove people. Sure. And we don't need to give people surprises at the end of the year because right. we can do continuous performance feedback. Oh, well, tools like Karma Notes we talked about right. earlier, those tools can sure. tell you at any given day, how you're performing, sure. and sure. there are many tools like that. Impraise, sure. sure. there are a uh, good works, and other tools sure. which organizations now increasingly putting into place sure. to not talk about as a surprise at the end of a given period of time, saying, "Hey, now it's like, oh, June. Let's talk about your mid-year, uh, you right. know, performance." Right. Well, you don't need to do that. Sure. As an employee on my mobile or any other kind of device, I can right. know and understand what my performance is looking like. Sure. Sure. So I think. Complete disruption sure. is up for the grabs. Sure. Sure. On the competencies and other things, they're going right. to be much more simpler. We are sure. going to track behaviors rather than sure. whole dhobi list of right. uh, uh, competencies. Sure. And performance potential, guessing about it right. and saying, oh, it looks like this guy in two years can be like this, or three years, can he do two levels jobs up? The traditional, you know, um, potential questions sure. can also sure. be answered from data, which we've right. gathered about the employee in the past, right. and that data sure. can tell us, as well as the manager, sure. where this guy is going. Right. Let me just draw you back to a completely different place and sure. then bring you back into HR. Sure. Now, if there are people, there are companies in the world who right. can tell you in 10 likes sure. what kind of person you are, Right. better than your colleague. Right. In 100 likes, right. they can tell you better than your parents sure. what kind of person you are. Right. If you start sourcing that kind of data, sure. they can tell you better than your manager or right. better than your colleagues what kind of person you are. Right. Predicting potential right. is much easier. So the whole space is up for grabs. Sure. There are many companies which are rushing in. Right. I think if I if I were to quote uh, Burson, sure. uh, there are a couple of billions of dollars sure. which are going into the technology space. Right. And I think around 500 million odd are up for sure. grabs for performance management itself. Interesting, interesting. So let, let, let's, let's talk about you know what you mentioned, right? Uh, continuous feedback. Yes. In many ways, that's like the holy grail of um, the whole aspect of talent management, right? Yes. You know, how is how are my superiors, how are other people within the organization continuously telling me how am I doing and what's been the needle movement, right? Yes. How is technology enabling it? Oh, technology can capture the data. Both yeah. uh, if you want technology to capture it automatically. Sure. There are organizations, I don't want to name the organizations, but sure. they have on the identity card a tag right. and okay. a small little camera which oh. captures the mood of the employee on an ongoing basis. It oh. captures organizations, interactions all around. Now imagine the kind of conversations right. happening oh. and all the data is available for oh. you to look at and cut. Oh, interesting. That's the extreme of it, right? And right. But organizations are using that kind of data. Right. On the other hand, there are simplistic tools sure. where after a meeting, right. and the meeting is over, and what I liked about you or I didn't like about you, I can sure. just punch in. Right. To, or I can swipe. Like right. Karma Notes, our tool, it just gives you a chance to right. swipe left or right, right, and what you need to improve upon and sure. what, are, what is going great for you. Right. All that data is real time. Right. After two minutes, Sure. Your profile is updated saying, hey, you know, based on all the interactions you did right. for the past one week or one day or whatever, sure. 
here is your uh, dashboard. And this is what you're, what is happening with you. Interesting. This is how you're responding. And not only that, it tells you right. what are the areas you need to improve upon. Interesting. It also, using AI, it tells you right. here are three things sure. you can do to sure. improve on these things. Interesting. Interesting. So the whole coaching and everything is is moving on to uh, right. uh, a mobile. And, right. Right. and the other thing which I think, I think the distinct difference sure. is from a place where you go to, like a sure. computer or a manager to talk right. to everything with you all the time. Right, right. It's on your on your on your device. Right, right. That's pretty interesting and, and exciting, right? In, in yeah, many ways. Yeah, it is. Um, so tell me, who's it, who's it for, right? Is it really only for very large organizations, you know, or is it for a particular type of industries or a particular size of organizations? Who's it for? Is it practically applicable for everyone? Well, if you ask me, uh, I see it uh, applicable between husband and wife also. <laughs> Let's say you had a tiff and your wife is going to give you a feedback. Rishit, right. I want you to improve on this. Right. Well, it's as simple as that. Yeah. You know, you fought, you you became angry sure. just for the heck of it. Sure. You sure. get that feedback, you can improve on it. Yeah. So yeah. It, I, I draw draw the conclusions from that perspective. So sure. I don't think it's about the organization size or anything. Sure. If you want to improve any relations, sometimes sure. you are unable to say things on the to the person on his face. Right. But right. But you can, you know, in the old days you used to pass on a letter or a Correct. note. Correct. You can just do a swipe right. in these kind of days. Right. And actually, people in real life use it. Sure. So if you use Tinder, right. people get dropped off, Correct. unliked, Correct. on swipes. Correct. So it's, it is, is as simple as that. So right. that's already prevalent. I just think that gets from social sure. into organizations. Sure, sure, sure. That's, that's very exciting. Um, so what's next, right? Some of the things that you talked about is, of course, you know, uh, seems very cutting edge, like, for example, having a camera with you going about all, all the way, right? You know, but then I can see the other side to it as well, in terms of people raising privacy concerns, right? Where, where is all of this headed, right? Yeah. And, and is it making talent management much more simpler, right? For example, the way you talked about, you know, it's, it's very simple. It's about a swipe. It's continuous feedback, right? That's the simple part of it. But of course, there's an aspect of, you know, regulatory concerns coming up because of privacy. You know, uh, people might be uncomfortable with it. Where, where do you see all of this headed? Yeah, absolutely. I think everything should be used with a consent. Right. If an employee gives a consent, use it. Sure. It's as simple as that. If the employee says, no, I don't want you to use it, don't sure. use it. Sure. It's sure. as simple as that. Because right. if I sign up saying that I want to improve myself and I, I'm on a journey to become a better person than I was yesterday, right. I would like to sign up. Sure. And if I say, no, I am perfect the way I am. Right. I don't want you to give me all this. Just take that simple consent. Sure. All privacy is in the hand of the person. Right. Unlike a Facebook or other places which look at your data and then sell it, use it, etc., sure. etc., cetera, where you just say, I agree, in terms and conditions, there's a long list. Here right. you can just say, you know, I, we would like to use your data to improve, to help you improve sure. in your journey to become a better manager, to become a better employee, etc. So mm. just one simple line and mm. you agree or disagree. Sure. And sure. we already see that kind of thing happening sure. when we implement tools like Karma Notes in Europe. Right. Companies are taking that consent because right. European laws are already in the favor of the individual. If the individual says, no, I don't want to give this data, sure. just don't take it. Sure, sure, sure. So, so where does this fit in, in in the in the traditional sense of very large ERPs getting implemented, right? Um, you know, are these functionalities available there? Um, you know, or so what's what's beyond you know the large traditional ERPs? Oh, yeah, yeah, a great question. I think every organization, whether sure. it's Oracle, uh, you talk about PeopleSoft, you talk about Cornerstone, sure. everybody, sure. while they have their large systems, sure. are seeing the need for moving this kind of system right. in the hands of the employee. Right. Everybody is going to the app route. Right. People are building apps for the sure. for the systems they have. Sure. People are building independent apps which talk and sit on top of these ERPs. Hmm. So uh, my example of this is very simple. Hmm. It's like having a mobile phone. Right. Damn complicated inside. Hmm. The hardware, etc. You don't know what is the speed, how does it work, what's the right. chipset, blah blah blah. Right. But damn easy on the user interface. Sure. So as a as a as a user, you know if I just tap, swipe, pinch. Right. I right. can use these. Right. So you don't need to know what goes in. Sure. So all these big ERPs, et cetera, are the things which go in, right. but on top of it sits right. something as simple as an app. Right. So, so that's so the way I see uh, technology going and helping the organizations and the individuals. Right, right. So, so it becomes more and more simpler, more Absolutely. and more intuitive to use, right? Yes. Um, you know, so let, let's talk a bit about the hardware behind it, right? Mm -hmm. you, you touched upon competencies, right? Mm -hmm. And that being critical to, to managing technologies. Even that's evolving, isn't it? Yes, you know, it people is. are moving beyond 
uh, you know, just yeah. simple competencies, right? Yes. In, in which direction do you see that going? Well, uh, I would like to quote here Mark, who sure. my, my partner from New York. Sure. Uh, he's developed a model called success model, right. which just simply sits on top of competencies. Okay. It just focuses saying that if your business strategic objectives for this year or next year are A, B, C, sure. for achieving A, B, and C, sure. what are the behaviors which you want to encourage in the organization right. and not beyond five? Right. So that right. people can remember, sure. it's easier to remember. Sure. So we have done that kind of work already with organizations which are forward looking, including right. a large consulting organization, right. a large hardware organization, sure. a large uh, restaurant business. So right. those organizations, a large pharmaceutical company, right. already using these kind of models sure. and communicating in a very simple way of sure. behavior. For example, right. the behavior here is you need to be savvy sure. to manage group dynamics right right it's as simple as that right now you don't need to decipher it and say savvy means what sure. one two three proficiency sure. level three four five right nothing of the thought this right. is what it is your manager can say are you savvy or not right right as simple as that sure. if you're not savvy sure. what do you need to do sure so sure. competencies will start going three four behaviors sure simple you right. know uh, things for you to improve so how is succession planning evolving in organizations uh, rajan you know what's what's changing out there i think um Essentially, there is one simple thing about succession. Sure. Uh, we talk about saying who's ready to take on the job or right. how do we get people ready to take on next jobs or somebody sure. else's job. Sure. I think jobs are a set of experiences. Right. That's how people look at building their competencies, right. getting ready for new jobs, etc. So right. when we look at it as a set of experiences, sure. again I quote my partner Mark, sure. we have developed a simple technique, something called experience maps. Right. And we've used that sure. in many organizations mm. to chart out, to right. say that, okay, there are three kinds of experiences. Core experiences, right. experiences where you're good in your function. Sure. So let's say if an H, I'm an HR, I should right. have done some work on compensation, right. but I should be damn good right. in, let's say, performance management sure. or L&D. Sure. Then there's a core. Right. Right? Then we call the breadth. In right. the breadth, there are two dimensions again. Sure. First is the dimension of have I been, you know, doing work alone? Sure. Have I start, done with a small team? Right. A large team? Right. A management kind of a, a team? Sure. Um, a leadership kind of role? So sure. Do I have experiences of that kind? Right. The other one is, do I have experiences only of one kind of place? So, right. have I done it only in a factory, a unit, a small little territory? Have I done it in right. multiple countries? I've done it in one right. country. Maybe one type of a market, yes. you know, a challenger market, a leader market that that's so an organization is there. From that. there, you can right. draw out as an organization right. what experiences sure. are needed for this person to grow from X place sure. to Z place. Right. And then once you've mapped that out, sure. you can easily show that on a single piece of paper to sure. the employee right. saying, hey, you know what? Nishit, you've done A, B, and C, but right. I think you lack in D, E, and F. What do you sure, think? Sure. I don't think there could there will be a debate there. Right. It's easier for the manager to say, okay, in my opinion, you should be doing this rather right. than saying, right. hey, here's a set of experience we've already laid it down. Sure. We know what it takes to be successful. Sure. We know what it you need, what you need to build, right. and have that kind of conversation. Whether it's your high potential, sure. or there are other people to say, how will we chart you out? And right. once you've charted those experiences out sure. and give them those experiences right. and build succession. Sure. So, so does it also make uh, you know uh, organizations much more agile in some ways in terms of you completely. know telling them about Co their careers completely. and 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 also sorry right. to cut you in right. from the perspective of employee he sure. knows that what is expected there's no surprise for the right. employee right 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 yeah. and I know if I, if I'm saying no to something right. how is it going to impact my career sure and if I'm sure. saying yes sure. how is it going to accelerate my career right. And the the agility comes from the movement, right, right? And from getting different kinds of experiences all the time, sure. And developing that mindset that I am not going to be only in one kind of place for all my life. Sure, sure. So if somebody's keen to read about more more on on uh, you know success maps, you know where does one go? Also, experience map is available on a website, right. the Defense website, right. Mark's website. It's called the Talent Strategy Group, TSG.com. Sure. sure. Uh, one can go and uh, download. There are free articles available. Sure. Right? Uh, happy to share our experiences. Sure. Uh, case studies available. Sure. Everything one can uh, download. Rajan, thank you very much for your inputs. I'm sure um, you know our, our our users and members of of this particular knowledge site would would really love those insights. Thank you very much. My uh, pleasure, Nishant. Thank, thank you. Thank you.